How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Donald Trump's decision to pull troops out of northern Syria that has drawn criticism from both sides of the aisle. There was a House resolution that was passed, 354 to 60, to condemn Trump's actions. So, of course, that was bipartisan. People like Lindsey Graham's and probably your Mitt Romney's. And, of course, your Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, they are totally against what he has done. Even a Tulsi Gabbard is against what he's done, although she claims to be anti-foreign intervention and anti-war, quote-unquote, unquote. She says that Trump has the blood of the Kurds on his hands. But before I even get into all of that and what my particular views on it are, check out this clip from Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi in the background making a bunch of crazy faces. After we get done with that, I'll talk about what he said. I'll talk about Trump's decision. I'll give you my two cents and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on the top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. And the fact that someone no less than General Mattis has said that ISIS has been enhanced, that the danger of ISIS is so much greater, worries all of us. I asked the president what his plan was to contain ISIS. He didn't really have one. He said the Turks and the Syrians will guard the ISIS prisoners. I said, is there any intelligence evidence that the Turks and the Syrians will have the same interest that the Kurds or we did in guarding ISIS? And the Secretary of Defense was, was thank God he was honest, he said, we don't have that evidence. And so I said, then how can we think that this is a plan when there are Syrians and Turks who are not our friends, who ISIS, if they escape, does them very little harm, how can we let this happen? They didn't have any good answer. This is appalling. The president had no plan, no real plan for containing ISIS other than relying on the Syrians and the Turks. Then why did we spend a decade, billions of dollars, and lost lives in trying to curtail ISIS if on a phone call, on a whim, the president is going to undo all of that and turn this over to the Turks and the Syrians. I would also say one other thing. He was insulting, particularly to the speaker. She kept her cool completely, but he called her a third-rate politician. He said that the, there are communists involved and you guys might like that. I mean, this was not a dialogue. It was sort of a diatribe, a nasty diatribe, not focused on the facts, particularly the fact of how to curtail ISIS, a terrorist organization that aims to hurt the United States in our homeland. All right. So you saw that you heard that. Now, let's talk about what Chuck Schumer was saying here first, before we get into this whole thing about the Kurds in Syria, Turkey, etc. Now, yes, we were over there for a long time, many years spent billions if not up until the trillion dollar mark in that particular region trying to get things right trying to nation build all this debt in the third but should we have done it should we have been over there from the very beginning we should not have been over there we should not be fighting foreign wars so at a certain point in time you got to call it quits there's no reason for us to be over there okay now People like Chuck Schumer and Tulsi Gabbard and others would say that Trump has the blood of the Kurds on his hands because this is the main thing. The American troops, which are only about 50 people or less, we were in northern Syria and we were kind of like protecting the Kurds. The Kurds helped us in World War II and obviously the Iraq War. But the Kurds are not just some kind of friendly force over there in the Middle East that wants to help Americans. No, no, no. They want their own country called Kurdistan. Kurdistan would have parts theoretically of Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and parts of Iran, which is a different story, so I digress. They have an autonomous region in Iraq, probably created by the Americans when we went and invaded Iraq, but again, different story. They also want a big part of Syria, which is where we were before Trump said, let's come home. They also want some parts of Turkey. Turkey's like, look, 
you're not going to be able to take our country. We're going to have a strong border. You can't get it across and you can't just establish whatever you want to establish. And that's where their fighting is happening. Apparently, the United States got word from Turkey that they're going to come into Syria where the Kurds were at, regardless of what. 10,000 troops, 50 troops, who's going to win that particular battle? Now, some would say, oh, well, the Turks didn't go into, quote unquote, Kurdistan, which does not exist yet. But again, I digress. They didn't come there because the Americans were there. Well, they had been dropping bombs and we're dodging bullets, dodging bombs, all this, that. And the third, we're getting caught up in the crossfire between the Turks and the Kurds. We don't need to be there. Now, they're begun. What the Kurds can do is align with Assad and have Assad and Erdogan get together to form a truce. And then Turkey and Syria, two sovereign nations, can work on their border dispute by themselves. Look at it like this. Imagine if the United States was getting uninvited guests from the Middle East like Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Syria, quote unquote Kurdistan to come over to America and then set up border patrol and all kind of stuff between the US and Mexico. Like, no, we don't need that. Thank you for your assistance, but you've not been invited. Number one, number two, we have our own border patrol. We have our own police. We have our own wall. We have our own technology. We can handle our own situation. Let's have President Donald Trump and the president of Mexico get together and work something out. We don't need the outside people. It would be better if we could communicate between the two countries that are right here rather than uninvited foreign guests. And that is what most likely will happen with the Turks, the Kurds, and the Syrians. Some would say, oh, Assad's a bad man. He kills his own people, this, that, and the third. Look, that is their problem. They got to do with it. I don't mean to be insensitive or anything like that. But fighting has been happening in that part of the world since the beginning of man. This is nothing new at all. So let them do with it. One thing I got to say is that I did not realize how many warmongers there were in the government. The resolution passed 354 to 60 in the House. So that means you have pretty much all Democrats and a lot of Republicans that were against Trump pulling troops out of Syria. But I thought that he ran on being anti-war anti-foreign intervention and he wanted to bring troops home he did not want to get into any kind of regime change or things that aren't really our business I, I thought that's what he said so now that he's doing it you're upset i don't get it apparently during some kind of press conference trump said that the kurds are not really our problem or aren't really that important i'm paraphrasing so don't quote me exactly on that but basically he's saying what i'm saying they have their own issues. They have their own agenda. They want Kurdistan. Okay, congratulations. You want your own country. If you get it by your own means, then bravo. You did a great job. But it's not our responsibility as Americans to nation build. Does that sound familiar? We try to nation build uh, Syria. And look, it's a total mess. Same thing with Libya, Iraq. And they were trying to do it with Iran too. So why do we need to continue to do it, especially with Turkey, because part of Kurdistan would be in Turkey. Turkey is technically our NATO ally, and we are like halfway fighting them. Do you want to declare war against Turkey? Do you want to declare war against Syria? I thought you needed the Congress to be able to do that rather than just going over there and saying, okay, we're going to be here uninvited and we're going to fight those that fight the Kurds. I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think what the real situation here is, as I close, is that. Some people in America, the Warhawks, want to be over there to basically uh, balkanize Syria, take some of the oil that's on the east side of the Euphrates River, and just make that particular land be a money-making situation you know, for other nations that are in a particular area, rather than doing things that would help Americans. What's going to help Americans is focusing on America and not fighting other people's wars for them we are not mercenaries we are u.s citizens but i think i'll leave that right there for now and what do you think was it the appropriate thing to do to pull troops out of northern syria like i said it's only about 50 people or less we ain't talking about this whole big gigantic army even if it was a whole big gigantic army why do we need to be over there what is the purpose what is the reason okay i really don't get it i really don't understand if you're going to be against foreign intervention, if you're going to be against foreign war, 
then why say at the same time we got to be over there or we got to protect the Kurds because the Turks are right there and they want to fight all this, that, and the third. If that's the explanation, then we can never leave. And if the Turks follow through on their threat to come into quote unquote Kurdistan and deal with that situation militarily, what are we going to do? Are we going to fight? Now you have a war. Do you want war or do you not want war? That is a question. If you don't want war, what Trump did was correct. If you do want war, what Trump did was incorrect. And I don't really see any other way to look at it. It's a pretty black and white situation. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.